You're listening to Unity Online Radio, the voice of an awakening world. Thank you for tuning in for this Unity Partner Program. Unity Online Radio partners with spiritual leaders from organizations whose mission and messages complement Unity's. We are pleased to bring you this program on Unity Online Radio, the voice of an awakening world. Welcome to A Course in Miracles, Living the Love, Walking the Talk, with Rev. Jennifer Hadley, a beloved teacher of The Course, who has helped thousands learn how to express their beliefs from moment to moment in their everyday lives. Get ready to focus on your intent to be the love, be the peace, through practical application. Here is your host, Rev. Jennifer Hadley. Good morning, bonjour. Ah, I'm so happy to be with you. I'm on the East Coast now. It's a beautiful sunny day here. Uh, I'm in the New York area in New Jersey, staying at my brother's home, which is lovely. Next week, I go to England, where I will be for several months. So uh, I am uh, enjoying the snow because uh, we don't have snow in Los Angeles. <laughs> and uh, I am so happy to be with my family. So that's a really nice thing. So let us begin. As we always do, I invite everyone to place their hand on their heart. And we do this to remind ourselves that we are wholehearted. We're not just paying lip service anymore. Now we're going for the whole enchilada with our whole heart. And we are grateful and thankful right now to consciously connect and commune with the higher Holy Spirit self. We're grateful and thankful to remember that our true identity is perfect love. It always has been and it always will be. We are now and forevermore as holy as holy can be. And we're dedicating ourselves to forgetting any idea that we are not that true identity of perfect love. We're consciously intending to gather together for the purpose of releasing all attachment to an illusory life of suffering and shame and blame and regret and resentment, hurt, fear, doubt, worry. We're allowing all of it to be released permanently and healed back to the root source so that all we know is the truth that sets us free. We're already free. That's what we're remembering. In grace and gratitude, we share the benefits of our healing and our expansion with everyone because we're one with them. In grace and gratitude, we allow it to be. And so it is. Amen. 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 Well, I'm very excited for today's show. Uh, I have uh, a wonderful guest. I'm going to introduce her now. She is my teacher, my great teacher, and my mentor, my friend. I claim her as all three of those. And uh, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about her. And if you're interested, I also wrote about her today in my Spiritual Espresso, which you can find my daily blog at jenniferhadley.com. Uh, so my guest today is the Venerable Dahani Oahu, who is a Cherokee chief. She is the chief of the wild potato clan of the Green Mountain, Ani Yun Wiwa, and the 27th generation holder of the ancestral Oahu lineage in the Tselegi Cherokee tradition. She's also a very respected teacher of Vajrayana in uh Tibetan Buddhism, and the founder of the Vajra Dakini Nunnery, which is a Tibetan Buddhist nunnery in Bristol, Vermont. And she is also the founder and spiritual director of the Sunray Meditation Society. 
and the Sunray Peace Village in Lincoln, Vermont, where I love to go. And you may have heard me broadcasting from there in past summers of the last uh, number of years. I've gone in July to be a student and uh, enjoy the teachings of Venerable Dahani Oahu uh, in the Peace Village and camping in the Peace Village, which I find incredibly restorative and nourishing to my spirit. So without further ado, Venerable, welcome. Thank you so much, Jennifer. It's always a pleasure to speak with you and connect via the airwaves and electrons with uh, many people who are recognizing that their natural state is luminosity. Yes. And uh, I'm really excited for our conversation today. So uh, I have invited you to discuss with me the illusion. And uh, A Course in Miracles students know that a foundational part of the teaching of A Course in Miracles, which is what our show is all about, is this uh, truth that we are living in a dream reality. It's an illusory reality which we're projecting from our minds. And this is one of the most challenging things for many A Course in Miracles students to really understand. We can understand it intellectually, but to really get it in our heart and mind uh, can sometimes take many, many years of dedication and great, great willingness. So I thought it would be helpful for us in understanding the illusion to talk about it also from a Buddhist and Cherokee perspective and to hear uh, what those teachings are in terms of an illusion and, and kind of compare and see if this helps us to more clearly understand it. So since you're not a student of A Course in Miracles, Venerable, I'll just share with you uh, one of the things in the beginning, in the introduction to the course It says, and this is just a short uh, paragraph and a half really, this is a course in miracles. It is a required course. Only the time you take it is voluntary. Free will does not mean that you can establish the curriculum. It means only that you can elect what you want to take at a given time. The course does not aim at teaching the meaning of love, for that is beyond what can be taught. It does aim, however, at removing the blocks to the awareness of love's presence, which is your natural inheritance. The opposite of love is fear, but what is all-encompassing can have no opposite. This course can therefore be summed up very simply in this way. Nothing real can be threatened. Nothing unreal exists. Herein lies the peace of God. So nothing real can be threatened. Nothing unreal exists. Herein lies the peace of God. And A Course in Miracles tells us we're the dreamer of the dream. So in the the Buddhist and the uh, Cherokee teachings... Is there a similar teaching? Uh, yes, I see each teaching as it is. Uh, they are each complete and uh, convey a message to reach the consciousness of particular people who are exploring the infinite possibilities of forms arising. So it is often spoken of among Cherokee and Mayan people that this is a dream. And among the Mayans and some Cherokee, it is said that God is looking at us through the eyes of the children, and that our thought, speech, and action contribute to the appearances that are arising. And when there is a doubt or fear, these become uh, clouds obscuring the natural luminosity or or anida of people's uh, heart, mind, and relationship. And we do not attempt to describe what the mystery is. We just know it is a great mystery. And the attempt to describe it then begins to limit it according to 
and the ideas of perception. So dreamers, we ourselves are contributing to the appearances that arise. And in the tra tradition of the Cherokee people, we understand that there is a ceremonial cycle that is of appreciation, which acknowledges that we are part of a dynamic dance and that we return our uh, appreciation for the gifts of life and we care for the seeds of life, including uh, those which we plant to nurture the physical body. So in a sense, there is the acknowledgement of a relative existence, and then our ultimate existence is that we are light, and that this is uh, not separate, that we, like bubbles arising for a moment, appear as individuals, yet we are continuously united with the field. And as such, uh, we have spiritual responsibility to speak in the way that energizes the remembrance of that natural luminosity and uh, to live uh, in an ethical and moral way and most importantly, to be uh, kind and respectful. Uh, what is uh, significant, I would say, about Cherokee woodland people is the uh, relationship with nature, that the uh, trees, the water, the wind, the earth herself are also uh, part of the stream and how we uh, care for the environment also is a expression of our body-mind. So there is the responsibility to to give something back and to know that the uh, earth is alive just as we are. And so with this understanding, uh, people make prayers of appreciation and also take periods of time or experience periods of time for a contemplation uh, to contemplate the movement of the moon, the movement of the stars, and consider that as dreamers we have arisen from the same light and to energize our activity in such a way that we have uh, happiness, health, a good relationship with family, clan, nation, the land, and all beings. And in terms of the study of Buddhism, it is very clear that our mind projects what is the experience of our life in the relative sense. These projections arise from our uh, attachment or rejection, and uh, in a sense, what is rejected, what is what one is attached to, then, like magnetic attractors, aligns with the potential in the field that becomes the elements of our body, uh, mind expression, but most importantly, the physical expression. And so how we think very much uh, contributes to the appearances that are arising. What I find clearly um, similar in both traditions is that our voice and our thought actually becomes a wave. And that wave uh, carries one to a certain conclusion. And so it is wise to uh, see each person as a relative with the potential uh, for awakened mind and skillful activity and for ourselves to uh, pacify inner conflict 
uh, what is the first inner conflict? It is generally feeling separate and thinking that I exist alone when in truth the appearance of I is the result of many interactions. And uh, to purify those uh, obscurations, those uh, thoughts and activities that may hinder one's remembrance of their natural luminosity awakened Buddha mind. And to know that the seed of Buddha mind is within every being, and as such, uh, we can magnetize its expression in our lives by training the mind and clarifying our speech and living with the code of ethical behavior and also polishing the intellect to study and most importantly to develop the heart of bodhicitta that is loving compassion with equanimity for every living being. So that is a, a very simple uh, description. And in a sense, uh, in Vajrayana Buddhism, we begin to see similar to the physicist conception of holographic universe, we see very clearly how our minds built upon conditioned and habitual responses views things and generates the appearance of what we call uh, life. So it is a, a dynamic interaction. So in the relative sense, the experience of our body-mind is uh, real. When you put your hand on the hot stove, your hand quickly is withdrawn. And in the ultimate sense, that seed of awakened awareness is within us and we are not separate from it, like a bubble arising from the water that is uh, momentarily uh, expressed uh, individuated appearance and uh, one can, in that moment of individuated appearance, forget and uh, believe that they exist alone when in truth we are all dancers in this field of wondrous potential. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. So rich. It's, it's so comforting to me to know that all these teachings incorporate these same truths. It feels very freeing to me, uh, especially since our human history, there's been so much uh, violence and uh, war perpetrated because people believe different things. I, I find it very comforting that A Course in Miracles, that it it is very much aligned with these ancient Buddhist teachings and these ancient Native American teachings that uh, we can see all these similarities because in what you're saying, Venerable, you're, you're talking about valuing the unity of all life and holding it precious and including nature, Mother Earth, and all the beings as part of that unity. Yes. And that we we go back to our naturalness, which is this luminosity, that we are light beings. A Course of Miracles refers to that over and over again and makes uh, the same kinds of um, allusions <laughs> uh, with clouds and the light and that uh, thought forms of negativity are... Uh, like clouds in the sky blocking the light, but the light is still there. Yes, indeed. And we can hear that there is one truth behind the many appearances. And over time, there have been great 
individuals who have sought to remind us of the one truth behind appearances. And uh, the sectarian view or the idea that my view is the only view, um, this has become a cause of suffering. And ultimately, the message of the heart is to see all beings as our relative and to understand that we are dreams together, dreamers together, and most importantly, to recognize how certain uh, thoughts and behaviors uh, give rise to suffering. And uh, we can easily see some of the causes of suffering. So you may become angry with someone, and then you find your blood pressure goes up, or you may feel you uh, don't have enough, and then you don't recognize the gems that you have. So clarifying our view is the most important step to begin to see clearly just how we are connected in the circle of life is the, the first step to pacify the illusion of separation. Mm. Well, let us talk about clarifying the view when we come back from our break. I'm Jennifer Hadley, and my guest this week is Venerable Dahani Iwaku. If you're interested in learning more about her on the break, go check out her website, beautywayproductions.com, beautywayproductions.com, and also sunray.org, sunray.org. You're listening to A Course in Miracles on Unity Online Radio, and we'll be right back. As Unity Online Radio continues to expand its programming and outreach to the world, we count on the support of listeners like you. Please make your donation today. Go to www.unity.fm and click on Donate Now. Jest, there is truth. Shakespeare made the line famous. And at Holy Rascals, we've taken it to heart. Join us at HolyRascals.com, a spiritual education resource and community of spiritual boundary crossers who are on a truth-seeking journey that doesn't shy away from humor and frank conversations. HolyRascals.com offers cutting-edge webinars, short online videos, and podcasts. Our featured teachers are inclusive, radical, and often funny people who embrace the common heart of all religions. Find us on Facebook or check out our upcoming programs at www.holyrascals.com. Do you think you know all you want to know about the characters in the Bible? Do you know who could be called the king who loved too much? Or what it means to be a Jezebel? Or that the best love story in the Bible begins with the declared commitment of two women? The Bible's symbolic meaning can help you transform your life and discover the presence and power of God within you. Find out what these characters can teach you about your own life today by tuning into Biblical Power for Your Life. Each week, co-hosts Rev. Karen Tudor and E.J. Niles present a Bible character from a historical, cultural, psychological, and symbolic perspective. Your comments and questions are part of this lively discussion. Tune in every Thursday at noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern, and power up your life only at Unity Online Radio, the voice of an awakening world. Thank you for tuning in for A Course in Miracles 
living the love, walking the talk. Get ready to focus on your intent to be the love, be the peace through practical application as we return to A Course in Miracles, Living the Love, Walking the Talk. Welcome back. I'm Jennifer Hadley, and my guest today is Cherokee Chief and Buddhist teacher, Venerable Dahani Iwahu. I'm so happy to have her as my guest. And we're talking about the illusion and understanding it from the perspective of A Course in Miracles and comparing uh, to the Buddhist teachings and the Cherokee teachings. And we're talking about clarifying our view and aligning with the truth. And Venerable, A Course in Miracles essentially says over and over and over again that the cause of the illusion is judgment. So all thought produces form is one of the teachings of A Course in Miracles. So our judgment, our opinions, our decision to choose our own thoughts and beliefs rather than the truth is what creates this illusion. What do you think of that? Well, first I've taken a vow not to compare uh, different systems of uh, religious view, but to see each in their suchness. Uh, so what I can see are the, the ways in which uh, different cultures find their pathway back to remembrance of their natural wisdom state. And so um, I would say judgment is part of self-cherishing, the ignorance of forgetting that we have arisen from uh, a field of vast potential, that forgetfulness uh, comes through uh, comfort in the taste, the sensation, the experience, the vision, the movement of the physical form. And we also are not ever separate from that awakened state. And uh, some ways it was explained to me as a child is that we are explorers and that we made a promise that we would explore the potential of the individuated state, the ripples and the overtones and that we would return that information to the field. And when the heart begins to believe in the I as a, a self-sustaining, uh, then the return pulse and the remembrance and realization of that awakened potential becomes obscured. It doesn't go away. It's not lost. It can be like... Uh, mud in the water, once the water settles, then that pristine awareness is again revealed. And the ways in which that uh, mud, the muddy water is settled is through uh, looking at, oh, this person I am, born of that person, that person, that person. So what I call I, it is not uh, existing in itself. It is a, a continuation of a wave. And then as one explores even more deeply, it becomes clear this person that I thought was myself is, was once a galaxy, was once a star, uh, the very essence of all appearances arising is also within this uh, person. And then comes the unbounding of uh, grasping at uh, I myself as a uh, separate uh, form. One then recalls the, the tone that gives rise to the myriad appearances. Um, so judgment, it is a level of uh, discriminating 
awareness. Like we do want to make decisions about what is wisdom and life force enhancing within yes. our own lives. Uh, when we think that uh, another person's perspective or religious view or philosophical view is less than, um, it may not be the suitable path for oneself, yet um, we can energize the ideal that we have all arisen from one light and we're finding our way again to that shore of awakened wisdom. Uh, so the, the judgment is, the judgments are many. Uh, first, this is comfortable, I like, I don't like, um, I want more. Um, and they are related to the senses. And just as the senses uh, seek uh, pleasure uh, or satisfaction, they also can show us that we are not uh, separate from the natural awakened state. When we begin to peel away, oh, I myself exist, oh, you'll see I'm part of a field, oh, this sweet taste, it expands, the heart is comforting, oh, that sweet taste, it can be a distraction to the clear flow of wisdom energy, the winds, the, and in the channels of my body-mind. And so, uh, through analyzing, we can uh, see the layering of uh, thought, sensation, uh, through the senses as uh, veils over that natural awakened state. And also, we can peer the way and see within the experience of the body-mind is also the field of naked awareness. And uh, the pacifying and the purifying of the judgments that see other seeing beings as separate or not taking responsibility for our activities, that is through the energy of love, of compassion. And so we consider, I am an explorer. I look to see the nature of mind. I understand the suffering that has arisen from confused view and uh, inappropriate action, and I train my body-mind to realize that wisdom state that I and all beings may make our way to the shore free from illusion. So it is important, uh, what we call bodhisattva mind, uh, that we have compassion for every being, because it is through the suffering that is caused by I want, I like, I don't like, I got it, now I don't like it. And of course, <laughs> getting uh, sickness, old age, and death, uh, these are uh, experienced as suffering. And so when we analyze, oh, anger, uh, withholding love, uh, untrue words, harm causing, this makes suffering for others, and we can see uh, medically that uh, having negative thoughts creates a chemical cascade that uh, generates more negative thought and suffering for the body-mind. So when we think about judgment, we can uh, transform that state with uh, love for every sentient being and developing uh, the mind's ability to analyze what is the source of this thought and or emotion. 
ultimately, as we examine, we see that in and of itself, it is empty, has no existence. And so this we call the uh, mind analyzing, uh, cutting away from the, the view that things are happening to us to the recognition of how our body-mind belief systems contribute to the appearances arising. Um, so uh, for some, this seems uh, hard and difficult. Uh, why do bad things happen to good people? And it is a reminder that every moment a human being has the ability to make a choice uh, to choose to do no harm, to choose to energize um, kindness and skillful activity that will uh, relieve suffering and not add to the clouds of confusion. So in every moment, one has the opportunity to, um, to choose. Uh, what is wisdom enhancing. And so different systems uh, have arisen according to the nature or the appearances of different people's minds and culture. And what gets someone there, that's what's important. What is the vehicle for a human being with a commitment to reach the shore free from illusion? That is uh, the vehicle that will get you there. So for some, it may uh, be any of the world's religions or philosophies. And mm -hmm. uh, for the wise practitioner, we want to see the one light, the source of all appearances, and understand the interaction that some uh, call karma of our body-mind and the results that arise and the choice to intentionally energize uh, our awakening and skillful activity and transformation of the causes of suffering. Yes, let us get to the shore free from illusion and... What you're sharing is a beautiful expression of the same teachings of A Course in Miracles that uh, as we see our brothers and sisters, we'll see ourselves. As we see ourselves, we'll see our brothers and sisters that our experience in this world is projection and that all suffering comes from choosing to energize a belief and thought in separation, that all of our thoughts produce form, and that our perception is projection. And I, I wanted to ask you, Venerable, there is um, a, a section in the Course that is often quoted, and people have different perceptions of what it means. And uh, I, I, I'd love to get your comment on it. So, what it says is, into eternity, where all is one, there crept a tiny mad idea at which the Son of God remembered not to laugh. So, forgot to laugh. In his forgetting, did the thought become a serious idea, and possible of both accomplishment and real effects. So, this idea that the idea of separation was a tiny mad idea at which we forgot to laugh. We took it seriously and began to build on it and build on it. And then some Course in Miracles students believe that our human experience then is like a punishment for having chosen that. And uh, others believe that our experience is an exploration of that idea of separation that actually has some benefit. What What is the view that uh, you have? Uh, from 
Beginning with time, the natural state of our mind is luminosity, luminous and clear. And uh, through ignorance of this, there arise the ripples of exploration. And then through attachment to the sensation and experience, the cloak of forgetfulness covers the remembrance of our natural wisdom state. And so, do you think there's any benefit to this exploration, or is it all just a waste of time, energy? Oh, my gosh. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Jennifer, the gift of life and the opportunity to explore is most wondrous. And it is, uh, there's no waste of time. Uh, It is a chance to, to know that in the experience of the individual is also the awakened state, the dance of universes and forms arising and multi-dimensions of exploration. And it's all happening right now. (laughs) Because there is only now. Yes. Mm -hmm. So time is... uh Uh-huh. Part of the illusion. Time is part of the illusion. Well, it's a construct that we've created uh, to give, uh, how do you say, definition uh, to the projections that have been created so that we may understand the overtones that appear. Uh, We give uh, the directions and uh, time as a way of measuring. Uh, The measurement is uh, like a map uh, of where we've been, uh, and ultimately it is clear that time uh, arises as the mind's projection uh, to uh, analyze the appearances. Yet, all of the appearances are occurring in the moment. Ah, so comforting (laughs) to me. It's so comforting. And we're about to go to a break here. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but uh, I would love to talk for a moment about reincarnation. We just have a short moment here before the break. And uh, Course of Miracles talks constantly about how spiritual practice saves time. It saves time in suffering. And, and that we are, when we are doing a spiritual practice, when we have a strong spiritual practice, when our whole life is our spiritual practice, then we are really undoing time. And to me, uh, it feels like what we're undoing is all the negative karma that we, we would otherwise uh, undo in a very slow, kind of piecemeal way. We can do in huge chunks by having a deep spiritual practice. What, what's your view of that? It is clear that when one embarks upon the spiritual path and has the clear intention, commitment, and dedication to uh, pacify conflict, purify uh, dissonant views, that the wisdom potential of the awakened state becomes more apparent. And it is uh, like learning to play the piano without any keys. It is to recognize that each moment our speech, our view, and action are indeed shaping the world around us. Yes. Oh, beautifully said. Thank you so much. It's time for us to take a break. You hear the music and... Just to let everyone know, if you're wondering who who who's that 
beautiful voice. That's Venerable Dahani Iwahu. She is my guest today. She's a Cherokee teacher and a Buddhist teacher. And you can learn all about her at beautywayproductions.com, also sunray.org. I'm Jennifer Hadley. You're listening to A Course in Miracles. We're talking about the illusion. And we'll be right back on Unity Online Radio. He's the most talked about figure in history. How do you see Jesus? As a savior, a way shower, a mythical hero. In his cutting edge new book, Jesus 2.1, an upgrade for the 21st century, Reverend Dr. Thomas Shepard explores the many human concepts of Jesus. The man of Nazareth has been an imaginary spiritual playmate for millions. Best friend, confidant, silent lover, surrogate father, brother, husband, Trusted king when earthly governments fail. All-purpose superhero who will save the day before the final credits roll. Jesus is like a program that has been adapted through the ages while the basic code remains undisturbed despite all subsequent modifications. Now it is our time to rewrite and reinstall the Jesus program with updates for today. Just as every previous generation has done and every subsequent generation will do. The Romans killed Jesus for being a revolutionary. Every succeeding generation kills him anew by losing sight of the ongoing revolution in human consciousness that he represents. Explore the new book, Jesus 2.1, at www.shopunity.org. Have you heard about Dr. Tom Shepard's new program on Unity Online Radio? Tom Shepard, isn't he the Unity Magazine question and answer guy? Right. Well, they've actually turned him loose with a radio show, and I hear it's going to be pretty edgy. Edgy? Like what? Guest panelists and students from Unity Institute and Seminary, topics like abortion, gay marriage, war and peace, environmental issues, Islamic fundamentalism, universal health care, religion and politics, current events. Yeah, but they'll all be Unity people, right? Dr. Tom and his students will talk about the hard questions facing all people today, sometimes joined by rabbis, priests, liberal and conservative ministers, Buddhist monks, Baha'is, Hindus. And he's going to interview them on the program? Better. He's going to introduce a controversial topic and let students and special guests go for it. This could get explosive. Does he have guys in black shirts standing by to break up the fights? (laughs) If I know Dr. Tom, he will keep it both friendly and spirited. Whoa, I gotta hear this. When and where? The program is called Let's Talk About It, and it's on every Thursday at 9 a.m. Central Time, only on Unity Online Radio. So let's talk about it. Definitely, let's. You've been listening to A Course in Miracles, Living the Love, Walking the Talk, with Rev. Jennifer Hadley. If you have a question or comment about today's program, or if you'd like to join in the discussion, visit us on Facebook at A Course in Miracles Pledge, where you can join with the community of like-minded people who have pledged to live A Course in Miracles every day, in every way. Now, back to A Course in Miracles, Living the Love, Walking the Talk. So we're back. I'm Jennifer Hadley, and my guest today is Venerable Dahani Iwahu, and we're talking about the Cherokee and the Buddhist views of illusion and separation. Fantastic uh, teaching here from Venerable Dahani. If you're coming in late, I encourage you to get the download (laughs) and listen to it. It's just so rich and so beautiful. And we were talking about the tiny mad idea and the causes of that feeling of separation and really undoing time, allowing time to, allowing ourselves to recognize there is only now. 
It, uh, Venerable, in A Course in Miracles, uh, talks about reincarnation a little bit. And it basically says that for many people, because The Course in Miracles is in many ways, it is a channeled book, it is the teachings of Jesus, and in many ways it is for a Christian audience to help bring a Christian audience to this understanding of the illusion and uh, what, what creates separation, that our thoughts are producing our experience, that perception is projection. And um, it is, uh, so it says in here, Jesus says, our course is not concerned with any concept that is not acceptable to anyone, regardless of his formal beliefs. So there's there's not uh, a lot about reincarnation in here, but there are so many references to saving time, to undoing time, and that to me is... Uh, the undoing of karma that we were talking about before the break. And we were talking about spiritual practice being that mechanism to assist us in undoing that karma, undoing uh, the karma of of having many years to... uh, experience our choices in the past and our beliefs. And one of the, speaking of beliefs, one of the things that <clears throat> really became clear to me last year is that truth is real and beliefs are the illusion. And so when I really saw, oh, I don't actually need any beliefs at all. The truth is all that I need. And I have it already, so I'm good to go, was so helpful to me. I wonder if there's a teaching uh, in Cherokee or Buddhist <clears throat> around beliefs versus truth. Um, first, it is uh, better to know than it. belief is a beginning of the exploration. Uh, knowledge is realizing uh, that which you've explored. As you observe your thoughts passing, watch very sensitively for the moment when one thought fades and another arises. This transition is quick and subtle and involves the momentary ability, the momentary availability of a space which you can contact and even expand. This space has the quality of openness, free Mm -hmm. from discursive and discriminating thinking, and time. So when we speak of time, we understand it is indeed a construction of our projection. And we have access through observing our thoughts and the transitional point of one thought ending before another begins, gives us a taste of the timelessness of now. In terms of transforming uh, karma so that beings may be free from suffering, there is a a process of uh, first recognizing the body-mind's attachment and the uh, dedication that all beings may have what they need. So the first uh, method of uh, clarifying our unity in a field of abundance is the process of making offerings to feed the hungry. And for the person who feels limit, it can be pouring Uh, beans from one hand to the other, uh, visualizing that all beings have what they need. Everyone has what they need. And in this way, the concept of uh, limitation begins to fall away. Karma is... um, Karma are magnetic attractors that appear based on our uh, self-grasping 
conditioned view and action. Excuse me. <laughs> I'm just while you're taking a sip there, I'll, I'll let you know that we're almost out of time here. Just a few seconds left, really. Oh, okay. <laughs> to finish your thought. Yes, so uh, karma is the understanding that what we do, how we move in the world, resonates through the field and returns to us. And so by cultivating a heart of generosity and compassion, even for what you may think you don't like about the appearance of self, we can begin the process of unwinding the magnetic attractors to reveal the infinite wisdom potential that is within all appearances from beginningless time. Mm. Ah, thank you for that. It feels so nourishing to hear you uh, articulate these truths. And that's all that we have time for. It's gone by so fast, and I'm going to say a prayer and thank Venerable here again. Her website's sunray.org, beautywayproductions.com. You can read about her on my blog today at jenniferhadley.com. And again, let's place our hand on our heart and give thanks for Venerable, for her joining us today, for her precious life. Let us give thanks for our own precious life and that we can release all thoughts of separation and remember our true identity is that natural luminosity. We know this for ourselves and for everyone else and we give thanks to be a blessing and to share the blessing. In grace and gratitude, we allow it to be, and so it is. Amen. Amen, amen. Thank you, Venerable. You're welcome, Jennifer. Best wishes to all. (laughs) See you in the light. See you in the light. Thank you for tuning in to A Course in Miracles, Living the Love, Walking the Talk, with Rev. Jennifer Hadley. Join us every Tuesday morning at 10 a.m. Central for more tools and insights into how to express your beliefs from moment to moment, every day, in every way. A Course in Miracles, Living the Love, Walking the Talk, only on Unity Online Radio, the voice of an awakening world. This program is brought to you in part by JenniferHadley.com, a global resource providing tools, insight, and support for those seeking to live A Course in Miracles every day in every way. Online at www.JenniferHadley.com. While there, we invite you to visit Jennifer's blog, where you can join with the community of like-minded people who have become Jennifer's prayer partners through her daily power prayer. Like them, you can enjoy this extra support as you come to walk your talk and live A Course in Miracles every day in every way. Pop culture is defined by the Oxford Dictionary as modern popular culture transmitted via mass media and aimed particularly at younger people. But can it be meaningful? Spiritual, even? The hosts of Pop Conscious think it can be, and that it can be fun to explore, too. Milena Dawn and Stacey Macris Ross will be your amateur cultural anthropologists, examining pop culture and spirituality every Monday at 2 p.m. Central on Pop Conscious on Unity Online Radio, the voice of an awakening world. Inspiration only takes a moment. Take a moment now to reflect on this message from Daily Word. Is something in your life causing you concern? Don't be discouraged. The presence of God is peace and harmony, healing and creative ideas, is with you every moment of every day, providing the help you need. In quiet moments of prayer, let go of any concern. Anchor your trust deep in the realization that with God all things are possible. Never doubt it for a single moment. You are a spiritual being, blessed with all that you need for happiness and fulfillment. God's wisdom will guide you. 
God's strength will help you do all that you need to do. And God's joy will lighten your heart with hope and courage. This meditative moment is brought to you by Unity. 